So this is our lo logo, our, our where we are in Johnson County. Um, RSVP is, it stands for Retired Senior Volunteer Program. RSVP is a part of AmeriCorps Seniors. AmeriCorps Seniors is a part of AmeriCorps. So AmeriCorps is still getting things done for America. Um, but yeah, and AmeriCorps, they just changed their logo recently, which if, you, if a lot of you don't had never seen it before, um, this is actually a newer logo. So, um, and I guess that's only pertinent because branding changes and, and things change and I'll get to the next screen and it'll make more sense too. So this is my um, kind of, my understanding of AmeriCorps, I started off in AmeriCorps NCCC. That's a National Civilian Community Corps, I believe. CCC was created actually in the Roosevelt years, FDR created it. Um, it was kind of created during the depression era. Um, and I think it was only men at that time that were recruited into it. I think my um, great uncle was actually a part of it. And a lot of the things that they did was with the, um, I think it's with the WPA or the Works Project Administration. And they, um, they just did a whole bunch of really physically hard work um, creating, you know, creating our national parks and benches and, you know, lots of things that you find in our natural parks. Um, a lot of that was done by the CCC. So when Clinton came into office, when Bill Clinton came into office, he restarted that program in a different form called NCCC. And then you got uh, women involved too, and um, people of all uh, backgrounds, uh, ethnicities and races were incorporated as well. Um, and that's just one program. And I just say that because that was my familiarity with it. And from there, I learned that it's AmeriCorps is essentially it's an umbrella program. So I have the AmeriCorps at the top. So the MLK Day of Service and the 9-11 Day of Service, uh, all of the programs within AmeriCorps do usually do something like um, recognize these days. Um, and MLK Day of Service is in January. Um, and 9-11, of course, is on 9-11. Um, on the left hand side, I had put the, some, some of the different programs and I don't, I don't even know if this is all of them. It could be, there could be more, but through the years, a, a bunch of different national service projects have come together. And now this is how it's formed. It's all over, you know, AmeriCorps is overarching it. We have NCCC for 18 to 24 year olds, AmeriCorps state and national. I don't know what the age limits are and AmeriCorps VISTA. And I believe all of those programs do have stipends for them. Um, AmeriCorps senior programs that are available. And the, this is a, these are federal programs, but not all places have them. For example, in Johnson County, AmeriCorps seniors, RSVP, this program that um, I, you know, I, I direct um, is here. There is no stipend for it. Um, and we do not, to my knowledge, have AmeriCorps senior foster grandparent program or senior companion program. So that's just in certain places. And, and what it comes down to is there's a lot of different grants they open up at different times, depending on the government and how they're doing their funding. And then we have local organizations like the United Way of Johnson and Washington County who sponsor our program. So they wrote a grant for the AmeriCorps Seniors RSVP program. I don't know if any of you are around when um, the RSVP program was through uh, Elder Services. Um, Elder, Elder Services was a, a well-known organization, nonprofit, and um, they were not going to be around anymore. So because of that, uh, United Way of Johnson and Washington Counties decided to pick up the grant and write the grant so that we could keep programs in Johnson County. So, um, so what is AmeriCorps Seniors then, just as an overarching? Um, it engages community members that are 55 plus uh, in meaningful volunteer opportunities in the community. So these could be all different types of community. Uh, Johnson County is a, a more well-off community, but we do have, we do also have pockets of like very low income as well. So um, it's it doesn't even necessarily mean 
um, where the need is. Sometimes it's just where the sponsor is that can apply for the grant. So, um, and the programs AmeriCorps Senior, they support education, financial stability, health, and other community priorities. So we have specific goals that we're reaching in a couple of those areas. Um, in order to be a member of our RSVP program, you have to be 55 or better. So if you're under 55, unfortunately, you're not here yet, but hopefully you'll, you'll get around to it soon. Um, it, you just have to be interested in sharing your skills and talents with the community. Um, you do have to fill out a volunteer registration form, which is probably the hardest part. <laughs> I don't like to fill out forms. I'm also one of them. But one of the things about filling out the form and it's, you know, all of the information about your contact information and just kind of what interests you have. Um, but it's also our way of having a signature and showing the people that we apply for the grants that we have volunteers and they signed off that they're going to volunteer with us. And there's only one hour requirement a year, so um, which is pretty awesome. I mean, a lot of people want to do a lot more, but I also have people that just have too much on their plate. But if there's just a one-time activity, they're more than willing to like help out in that. So, so those are the membership requirements. Um, these are some of our priorities, we, we call them priorities. This is a health priority that we have, the RSVP Medical Transportation Program. And this is specific to RSVP program. Without RSVP in Johnson County, we wouldn't have this. Um, what, what it is, and I'm the coordinator of this, and it's about to start up again. It's been closed down because of COVID. It was suspended, but now that our numbers are so much better and vaccines are out there, we're going to restart it um, April 1st. So, our volunteers provide rides to seniors and disabled adults who, you know, they don't have to be 55 plus if they're disabled, um, if they have no other means of getting to medical appointments. And that's really important, especially in places like Iowa, you know, even though Johnson County does have like transportation, sometimes the, you know, um, if somebody has Medicaid and, you know, they call their med Medicaid transportation, it just, it's not always reliable and it's just unfortunate. And the one great thing about this is, is uh, volunteers get a really good connection with the people that they drive to their appointments. One thing that about this program also is some people can have like cars, but they just don't have someone to drive them home after, you know, an eye appointment or something like that. So it is very beneficial for like a wide variety of people. Um, uh, so I'm just going to see if I can move this. Okay. Another program that we look at is, uh, educational priorities and RSVP has connected with, um, this is actually a United way of Johnson and Washington County program called reading buddies. Um, if you know any history of the Johnson County um, RSVP used to be rock and readers. Um, so it was just one of those things where it just made more sense to have one person do the, all the coordination for both people 55 plus or under that wanted to be a reading buddy. So this is where um, it's kind of interesting and can get kind of confusing, but we connect with both our sponsor agency for, pro for programs like Reading Buddies and the next one I'll show you, which is Pen Pals. So those are their programs. They're gonna stay around. If for some reason the grant didn't stay around for RSVP, those programs would still be here because they're with United Way here. Um, but what we do do is we do measurements, just some behind the scenes kind of stuff is we have set goals as far as how we're gonna improve education in the community. And Reading Buddies is one of those programs where we look at goals um, and see where the kids are reading at in the beginning of, um, of the session and where they're reading at the end of the year and how the Reading Buddies were helpful within that process. Um, so, and beyond, so those are the two main goals that we have, the health priority of the medical transportation and um, with this Reading Buddy program, um, we have a bunch of other uh, community priorities that we engage in. So this is the pen pal program I was telling you about again. 
very popular. So I figured I'd feature this. Um, so volunteers are paired with elementary school students um, to write letters back and forth, practice their art of writing, increase literacy skills, and build positive relationships through this process. And um, Unfortunately, because of COVID, both the Reading Buddies program and the Pen Pals program, we weren't able to do that within the past year. Um, I'm really hoping that with vaccines and everything going on with COVID, that things will get um, up and running in the uh, next school year, I'm hoping. So, um, and then there's other one-time projects and events. Um, we've been actually doing um, one-time projects uh, that are at home. Uh, so for MLK Day of Service, we did a uh, no sew tie fleece blanket. Some of you on this, I believe, have done that. We did that for MLK Day of Service, and we donated them to both Shelter House and to the Iowa City Animal Shelter. So both animals and humans um, were be benefited from the work of RSVP volunteers in making these blankets. And uh, it was a a hit and the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois, who's a partner organization with RSVP here. They, um, they also have a need for um, blankets. They give a blanket to each family when they come in to, uh, to the house. And so we um, are still in the process of doing fleece blankets <clears throat> for the Ronald McDonald House. I just brought one in, so I'm gonna see. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna see if I can show it really quickly here. But I'm also sharing the screen, so I don't know how that's gonna work. So I'll do it in my little screen here. This is basically a blanket. Can you guys see me like in a thumbnail at all or? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to show it to you right now, just how it looks like this. And then um, if somebody can remind me at the end, I'll show you, I'll show again. Okay. But basically the blankets can be done at home. And so, um, and they take, I think anywhere from uh, I don't know, two to six hours, just depending on your speed. And there's no, there's no need to go fast or, you know, you can go as slow as you want. So, um, but we still have some of those that we're doing for the Ronald McDonald House charity. So that's one project we're doing. Um, we have some others that are coming up we, that we are going to eventually give out to the schools. And these are for um, STEM projects. And uh, I think they're mostly math and they help with counting both uh, change into a piggy bank and um, beads going onto a string. And we have a little bit of kits that we can give out to volunteers that they can help put those together so that we can give those out to uh, the students before the end of the year. So um, we'll see if I can show that at the end here too, after this presentation here. Um, in addition to those types of projects, we also partner with organizations in the community. And this is ongoing. Our partnerships last three years and they can, we can always renew them. Um, these are all the different ones that I have at the moment. I'm gonna read them off just for the sake of, um, they might be too small for people to read if they're watching this later on. Uh, and some of these places have shut down due to COVID um, restrictions and some are starting to reopen. So these are all the ones that we've had, uh, that we have. Um, so we have the ALS Association and the Iowa chapter, and they actually have a cleaning program where they um, clean equipment for, uh, for people that need it who have ALS and they distribute to everywhere in um, Iowa. And so they have a, 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 I think it's housed in Iowa city um, where, and I had a RSV volunteer at one point that was doing this and it has been closed due to COVID, but it's just an awesome program that they at no cost because um, there's a lot of different equipment that's needed and needs to be clean and secure before it goes. So, 
Uh, Burr Oak Land Trust is one of uh, the programs that we do. They had needed for an office assistant at one point, and I do believe they have other volunteer needs. Um, they were closed because of COVID for a while as well. Uh, community is, uh, we have volunteers that work with the food bank there. Uh, Coralville Community Food Pantry, also people that do the food, uh, work in the food pantry. When COVID hit, we had some drivers that um, started driving um, uh, groceries to different places. So it was like a non-contact kind of thing. So they didn't have to work in the pantry. Um, Crowded Closet Thrift Shop, they have tons and tons of different volunteer opportunities there. And a really pretty amazing volunteer recruitment um, and just gatherings. They, they have it pretty well. They were able to run it pretty well during COVID and people felt very safe volunteering there. Um, Haycap has a mobile pantry at Mercer Park once a month um, where people come and they would do a drive through and hand out uh, groceries. Uh, Heritage Agency on Aging, they have programming where you can be part of a focus group or a task group um, in order to work on improving, um, improving different areas uh, for people who are aging in our area. So health, nutrition are some of the things that they have groups on. Uh, Horizon Meals on Wheels, you have drivers for them. Um, Iowa City Community School Districts, that's where we do the Reading Buddies program with. Iowa City Police Department, we've had an office assistance with them. Uh, Iowa City VA Healthcare System, they have different positions there, but a lot of times people will like be a greeter or help people uh, learn how to get around the hospital. Uh, Iowa City Animal Care Center, we unfortunately haven't able to get in there yet, but we did make the fleece blankets. Uh, they do, when they will reopen, they will need people to socialize with the cats and the dogs. Uh, Johnson County Historical Society, we have, um, there's an, oct I always pronounce this wrong, octog octagon, it's an octagon, octagonal barn. Um, <laughs> so Richard Tyler is kind of the one that kind of works with that. And I feel bad that I'm horrible at uh, remembering how to say that. Um, but he continuously restores it. And so he's, he um, connected with the Johnson County Historical Society and were able to get volunteers out there. And that was something we were able to do continue during COVID-19 just because of the outside and distance from others. Um, we have a mediation services of Eastern Iowa. So a lot of, um, this is a long time thing. We've had people in uh, doing mediation services and they were able to start that up again within the last couple of months over Zoom. Uh, Miracles in Motions is um, an organization that is out in Swisher, and they work with um, horses and kids with neurological um, issues um, doing therapeutic rides. Um, it's a really cool program, um, a little bit different than a lot of ones that I've seen. Uh, Ronald McDonald House Charities of Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois. Um, they have a lot of different volunteer opportunities for both desk work. Uh, if you're someone that just likes to help out in the background and do cleaning of rooms, they have a big need for that. Eventually, um, hopefully they'll be able to get back into doing meals. Um, sometimes they do groups to uh, do meals for the families there. Uh, table to Table is an awesome organization that um, gets a lot of food from uh, different, uh, um, like Hy-Vee and the food co-op, different places like that in the area that so that the food doesn't go to waste and they donate it to places like Shelter House, et cetera. Uh, Trail is a great program for um, individuals. I believe it's 55 plus as well. And so we have like chore activities and driver needs um, are two of the main things that they need for volunteers. Uh, Shelter House, we haven't been able to get in there. So we did that police blanket project for them, but eventually uh, they need a lot of work with sorting um, and helping out at the front desk. Now the University of Iowa College of Medicine, this is a pretty interesting one. Um, Every year in the fall, except for this last year, they weren't able to do it. Again, COVID. 
but um, they did a program. They do a program where they have uh, volunteer patients who are 55 plus who come in. And this gives um, the second year students an opportunity to do an actual physical and take a history. Um, and a lot of volunteers really love doing this. It's just a, a very interesting intergenerational kind of activity that people really enjoy. As well as uh, the University of Iowa College of Nursing, similar in a similar vein, I don't think they do any um, physicals. They do a lot of just contact with people 55 plus and ask about like the aging process and how that's very different for so many different people. Um, and it gives them a connection to people uh, in the community and just to learn about that process of aging. So people love that one too. They usually spend an hour, um, three different times, and they've been able to do that virtually. Um, normally they just go into the community or if a volunteer wants them to come into the home, um, it's, it's really up to the volunteer where you feel safest meeting. And uh, I think the last one that we have at the moment is Visiting Nurse Association. They run a flu clinic every year, and we have a lot of RSV people, um, volunteers that uh, connect with the Visiting Nurse Association. So, um, so these are all of our partners at this moment. I continue to grow it as you know best I can, and um, working to get more opportunities. And basically. This is where it kind of feels like a brokerage kind of system and not in like in the, all the best possible ways, but anyone that is already volunteering at these places can sign up as an RSVP volunteer and say, hey, I already, you know, um, volunteer at community. Um, and then we can record your hours and you can be an active participant in the RSVP program. And the counting of numbers is kind of a thing that goes into we're doing like a national program and it kind of shows all the different ways that people are engaging in the community. So that's what the taking of numbers is all about, um, as well as um, one of the other benefits of our program is that we do recognition every year. So, um, so if you're an RSVP member and you're volunteering at any one of these places, um, you still get recognized in, uh, you know, whether it's a, a dinner that we have or um, who knows, during COVID times, maybe you get a <laughs> drive-by cupcake or something. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to, any, any questions on this? I'll just stop for a second just in case people have questions. Okay, I'm going to continue. Holler if you do. All right. Okay. So I started mentioning some of the benefits. Um, if you, um, this is a benefit for both the RSVP volunteer and a station that connects with us. Um, RSVP does have free supplemental insurance uh, while volunteering, including excess accidental medical coverage, personal liability, and excess auto liability. So. Uh, volunteers do have to have their first insurance, um, and we would be supplemental. We never, we hope to never have to use it, but it is a nice thing to have. So the one um, takeaway I would say is if something ever happens while, while volunteering, um, e whether you're doing it with our RSVP specific one-time projects or the medical transportation, or if you're doing it at a different station, community partner is to give us a call within 24 hours if there is anything that happens, and then we can um, kick that in. Uh, for our medical transportation program, we do do reimbursement for mileage. Um, and also, uh, Connections to volunteer opportunities that interest you. We just have, like, I am like your hub and I can say, where do you want to volunteer? Um, and we'll see what's out there, um, especially during this time, because then I know what places need volunteers and what places are still um, not open to volunteers yet. So it's just kind of one-stop shopping, kind of nice in that way. Um, a lot, there's a lot of benefits of just being a volunteer in general, uh, making an impact, building new friendships and gaining a sense of purpose, fulfillment and self-confidence. And the, there's tons of research on volunteering and the benefits of it. 
um, and more benefits, staying connected, reduce stress, risk of depression. And as my dad would say, the most important thing is to have fun. So um, I'm going to see, this is an actual uh, 30 minute um, video. I'm going to see if it works here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Can you guys see this? Okay. It's not moving yet, but yeah, we can see the okay. screen. Yeah. America is a story about coming together in good times and hard times. It's about our courage, our compassion, our resilience to overcome any obstacle. For over 50 years, senior core volunteers helped write the story of our country by serving our communities. And in our next chapter, we're changing our name to AmeriCorps Seniors, but our mission remains the same. We come together to bring out the best of America. Join us. So there was just a little public service announcement. Um, and I just picked this quote because it just seems so right on for all this. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. It's a Helen Keller quote. Um, and there's just so many possibilities. Um, and anybody, a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fan knows this photo. Uh, we need you to make the magic happen. So that is the end of my presentation. Here is my contact information. If you guys want to write it down and I'll leave it up here for a while for anyone that's watching this video later. Um, I should note that I am, as you can see, still, <clears throat> still working from home. I'm going to take a drink for a second. Um, I am in the office maybe once or twice a week uh, to help get projects in place. That number there that um, if you want to dial to reach that, um, the extension is 303. That will take you right to my voicemail and I will give you a call back. And... I have a Google Voice that I've been using, and unfortunately, I don't have it right in front of me right now. So um, if any one of you signs up, um, or if you have to call me, um, I'll, call, I'll be calling you like, most likely from a different number, um, and I'll just leave you a message, because a lot of times it's, you know, you know it's scammed, right? Like... Uh, we also do, or I forgot to mention that too, we're, we're connected with um, Iowa Insurance Division and we do fraud fighters presentations. So I'm trying to get that up and running. So if anyone's interested in learning that and doing presentations, I'm, I'm looking for people to do that as well. Um, uh, we've done a presentation at the Iowa City Senior Center. And um, anyway, we're hoping to do that more too. I forgot to put that one up. <clears throat> 